It's easy to describe other senses. Objects could be rough or smooth, look shimmering, dull or yellow. Sounds could be loud or shrill, low, and tastes can be salty, sweet, spicy, and so on and so forth. Nevertheless, aside from only a handful of terms like putrid, musty, fragrant, or stinky, in pretty much any language you speak, you'll be in the same difficult situation should you want to describe the quality of sense. This phenomenon has been described and lamented for centuries, at least, and is still not only not definitively concluded why this is, there haven't even been any solutions proposed. In all this time, no one has come up with words to describe types of sense in English. This is true across almost any language you look at. Even ones that have dedicated olfactory terms have only a few, and these languages are certainly the exception. Before we look at why this seems impossible so far, we need to look at why this is possible with other sensory processes. Taking a look at visual processes, we can see that while looking at a wide array of samples, though all of them are unique, we can still lump them together as, in this case, yellow. This is a question that philosophers have looked at over the millennia. How are we able to agree on certain designations for colors, sizes, shapes, etc.? But however it is possible, even children compartmentalize in this way. What makes those other terms possible for other senses is that people can subconsciously agree on criteria for categories that allow for fairly wide range of view. For more on this, catch up on the week-long special blog series called Color Week in the link below. This is the problem for smell. No language provides examples for possibly how to organize th these into categories. There's no indication for how wide these could range or where the limits would be. Normally, people describe smells in relation to other smells, such as saying something has a scent like violets or oranges perhaps, and this happens for visual things too, but consider that both orange and violet are famous enough colors to be included in Isaac Newton's Roy G. Biv, to the extent that they both include thousands of their own shades and hues as well, but this is not the case for when something smells like lavender. Many thinkers throughout history thought that any sort of reduction to qualitatively described scent was impossible, including both Charles Darwin and Immanuel Kant. However, as mentioned before, a couple of languages in Southeast Asia do have terms for scents that don't correspond to any tastes or other nouns. While these languages include Manik and Jahai, are certainly few, that does show that it is not impossible on a biological or cognitive level for humans to do. Not only does it suggest that these olfactory terms would have been more important in Paleolithic societies, it might have been lost just due to infrequent use but that there could one day be common words to describe scents in any language. Thank you for watching and please remember to like and share as this really does help. You can also support this channel on Patreon for as little as a dollar a month and you get cool perks like my own linguistic theories as well as a podcast on alternative history of language, such as one released this week about how German could have been more prevalent in the world. However, there is also a daily blog for consistent free content on languages and linguistics. Links for everything are below. I hope you check it out, and I'll see you next time.